Hey there, happy Sunday supper. Thanks for joining me again. I'm so excited. So today I am sharing one of my absolute favorite bites. These little guys are so tasty. So it's Idaho potatoes, fingerling potatoes, and chorizo. I know, here I go pronouncing that word again funny. I can't help myself. I still pronounce it how I do in Portuguese and I can't seem to break that habit. Um, so this is one of the simplest things that you can make and it's so perfect as an appetizer. I love that you can make it ahead of time and that you could pick it up like that or take it off the little toothpick and eat it one at a time. But chorizo gives everything such great flavor. So I love using Idaho potatoes, fingerling potatoes. Um, to me, they are just packed with flavor and they are a little bit nuttier, a little bit creamier. Um, I just think they're fantastic. So even for like a busy weeknight, what I'll do is just take the potatoes, toss them with a little bit of olive oil, cut up some of the chorizo and roast them. I don't even cut them, whoops. And <laughs> it makes for such an easy side dish. But here's the thing, while most people think of potatoes as a side dish, I really don't. I love using potatoes as a main dish. I don't know if any of you saw my recipe today, but it is actually a fingerling potato and bacon flatbread. Oh my gosh, it's out of this world. I absolutely love it. Um, so, you know, just like all our Facebook Lives, if you have any questions as I'm going along, you know, please feel free to hop in and join along. We've got Heather and Cindy are saying hello, and Marion just shared our video. Thank you, Marion. Hi guys, thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right, so how many of you have cooked with chorizo? And a quick tip on chorizo. So there's different kinds of chorizo. There's the Mexican chorizo, which is a softer, and then this is the really hard Portuguese or Spanish ch uh, style chorizo. That's the kind that I use and that I love. Um, if you've been following me, you know that I cook a lot with this because just a tiny little bit gives it so much flavor. Um, have you guys cooked with chorizo by chance? Susan had potatoes as the main dish last night for dinner. What did you make, Susan? Kristen loves hearing you say chorizo. I can't <laughs> say it the way you did, but she chorizo. Likes hearing yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I cannot break away from that. You know, of all like the things that you learn to pronounce differently, it's one of those words I just can't say it any other way. I try, I try to say chorizo like you guys do, but it just comes out chorizo for me. <laughs> so the first thing that I do is I cut my um, Idaho potato fingerlings into little bite-sized pieces. So you can see them there. Um, then let's see. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize, and sometimes I see in recipes, always remove that outer skin from the chorizo uh, because it has a little bit, it's different than I would say um, pepperoni in that you, it's just better without it. I mean, it's not gonna harm you or anything, but to me it's always like just cut into it and remove that outer skin from the chorizo. Trust me, it will make your recipe, it won't have that little bit of a pull to it when you bite into it and it makes it so much better. Susan says last night she had a baked potato with avocado and egg and oh, some cheese. Yum! That sounds like my kind of meal. Totally something that I would put together. I love that idea and I have to tell you, I don't know that I've ever thought to put avocado on a baked potato, although I love both so much. But that's a fantastic idea, Susan. Thanks for sharing. Marion's saying that she's made burgers before that were half chorizo and half beef. Oh, oh my gosh. Now I could imagine that must have been so tasty. Wow. Okay, so now we're going to do little rounds of the chorizo. Of course, you know, the first one's going to have a tiny little end, so that one you get to eat. Cindy likes the chorizo because it's flavorful but not super spicy. You know, that's exactly how I feel. I am not big on super spicy food. So to me, this has just enough flavor and enough spice. And when you put it with these fingerling potatoes and then a little bit of olive oil and garlic, paprika and chili powder, oh my gosh, amazing. And it's so simple. So do I get to eat the other end again too? <laughs> 
so Marion, in your burgers, do you use, mm, sorry, do you use the Spanish uh, chorizo or the Mexican chorizo? I'm curious. And do you guys notice a difference in the different styles? I oh. like the Spanish one better, but I don't usually look when I'm buying. I just buy blindly. Really? <laughs> that surprises me. Okay, so I'm going to start um, our little sauce here. And basically, all that it is is olive oil. Then we're going to put in a little bit of paprika. And again, paprika, there is a big difference uh, depending on where you get it from. So I love the very like Portuguese or Spanish style paprika. Um, it's not quite as smoky. And I really, I love the sweet flavors of it. Then we're going to do a little bit of garlic powder. And if you follow my recipe, I actually have all the quantities down. But yes, I'm one of those, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's how I cook. What can I say? Now, as far as the chili powder, I am a wimp. So I only put in a tiny little bit. But feel free to put in whatever, you know, if you want to kick this up, by all means. You know, <laughs> if your family can handle it, go for it. Marion says that she used the Spanish chorizo when she made her burgers. Oh. And Susan didn't realize there was a difference, so she thanks you for that. But we've got some people just joining in who want to know what the difference is if you want to go over it again. Yes, absolutely. So Spanish chorizo is more ground. It's a little bit wetter, um, a little bit mushier. It's traditionally what you would see in, you know, a lot of the Spanish dishes. Um, this is more of a... Um, Usually you would see it in Spain or Portugal, so it's a harder chorizo. I would say it feels almost more like a consistency of like a pepperoni. Um, but like I said, just take a minute and remove that outer skin because it'll make such a difference in your dishes. And all you do is just go in there and then just peel it off after making a cut. It really will make such a huge difference. There's nothing worse than, you know, when you bite into something and it like it tastes really good, but something just doesn't feel right. And I'm afraid that's what happened when you don't remove it. And I've seen people do that before. Okay, so now I have cut up my fingerling potatoes and you will notice they're almost the perfect size. Not, you know, absolutely, but pretty close, right? And that's what makes this appetizer so fun. I love that you can make this ahead of time and put the olive oil mixture on it and then bake it right before your guests get there. So this is so perfect when you're entertaining, you know, especially if you're looking for an appetizer that, you know, you don't need a plate for, you literally, after it's cooked, of course, I should take this, the ones that are done, you know, you could put the whole thing in your mouth or you could slide them off. So however you want to serve them. Um, but I particularly love it. So then you just take a brush and you just go like this and coat them with the mixture and put them on a baking dish. Um, it really is pretty much that simple. And Kristen like, just pointed out this is a great gluten-free option as well. Oh, ah, you know what? That's a great tip. I hadn't even thought about that, Kristen. That really is a fantastic tip. So here- Marion is craving some chorizo now. Yeah. She knows this little <laughs> app looks delicious and she loves how easy it is. So, so easy. <laughs> And so literally, you just continue to put them together, you know, put them all on a dish and bake them. So I bake them at 375 um, for about 20, 25 minutes and they're done. And I'm not kidding. Every time that I serve these at a get together, people are asking me for the recipe because they're just so fun. And the other thing is, like I said, if you ever just wanted to do this, just as a meal option or a side dish. You don't even have to cut the finger links, throw it all in there, slice the chorizo, put this, what I did here, just drizzle it on top and bake. And that's fantastic too. It's just, you know, so versatile. So the other thing that I love is dipping, right? So how many of you have tried a uh, piri sauce, which is, again, it's a Portuguese, um, this is actually uh, a Portuguese company, but there's all different kinds and it's basically a hot sauce. I would say this is probably my favorite one. Even their hot isn't like unbelievably hot. So I really enjoy it and I love the flavors. Um, so what I do is I usually just put some in a little bowl 
and serve the plate like this. So you could either pass it or, you know, have it out and they are just so good. Christina wants to know how many you make per person mm. when you're making them for a crowd. Mm. And also she loves Piri Piri. Oh, <laughs> I shouldn't be eating, should I? <laughs> so I usually do four or five per person, especially if you're having them, you know, passed around. If you're doing it as a meal or as a side dish, you know, obviously you would want to do more. But um, these are perfect. If you're serving other appetizers and you saw just, they come right off the toothpick and what happens is the shorisu gets like really crispy on the outside and so do the potatoes and you're not using a ton of oil you're just brushing a little bit on but it gives it just enough kick and enough uh, crispiness it's really good <laughs> we've got lots of piri piri fans out there oh wow i didn't realize that it was that popular you know it's not that easy to find um, I particularly, I love Nando's. It's just a great Portuguese brand. Um, but when you do, I don't know, there's something about it. It's a little bit different than regular hot sauce. Amy says she's a wimp with spicy food. Do you think maybe you could mix it with some yogurt to cool it down a little bit? Oh my gosh, that's, actually that's a great idea. I'm going to have to try that. I bet that would be really good. And Christina yeah. is drooling probably on her <laughs> keyboard right now. I'm drooling a little bit myself. I'm going to stop talking get more into these <laughs> and i will tell you ron and the boys are home and cricket will tell you they have been dying to get into this all afternoon and so i will be finishing this up and making a another full platter for them <laughs> so this month has been so much fun with sunday supper month we've had a blast uh we have had the most entries we've ever had in our sunday supper contest which has been so much fun seeing what everyone submits every single week um, this week we're going to announce this week's winner and their photo and then next week we actually will be announcing the grand prize because you only have a couple more days to enter but it's not too late you know hashtag Sunday supper with your best Sunday supper picture and caption and we will be given away one five hundred dollar grand prize gift certificate for your family to go and you know enjoy Sunday supper together <laughs> or a couple hopefully for $500 it'll be more than one um, but so we're really excited about that so let's see who this week's winner is okay so this week we have Terry Simon from Washington and this is her Sunday supper and I loved that she brought it full circle so it is a Florida strawberry <laughs> salad and if you remember that was my very first Facebook live was with Florida strawberries and I made a strawberry salad so it just really meant a lot to me that uh, that was her Sunday supper and it looks delicious it looks like she added some chicken to it uh, and some blueberries very healthy nutritious and delicious and that's what we love about it We've got an Idaho potato prize winner. Okay, and now we have an Idaho potato prize winner who's joining us. And Jessica Stanley is the winner for this week. And Cricket, remind me what the prize is again. Is it 10 pounds of Idaho potatoes to have fun and create some Sunday suppers with? It is, and some cookbooks. If you could just send us a private message with your email, Jessica Staley, we will get that prize pack to you. Fantastic. Well, thanks again, you guys, for joining me in my kitchen. It has been so much fun starting this new tradition of cooking Sunday supper with our community and our followers. It really has been a great way to start 2017, and we appreciate all your support, and I'll see you next week, same time.